Hey YouTube, Appalachian Survivalist here. I wanted to talk today about uh, personal or handheld communications. Uh, got a lot of different examples here of some possible things that you have probably seen and maybe some things you haven't seen. Discuss a couple uh, different advantages and disadvantages to each. Um, and maybe try to help you figure out what you need or what your uh, operational needs are going to be uh, in a uh, emergency situation. So, um, also these are not only, you know, can you use them in an emergency, uh, they can come in handy in your everyday life uh, on the homestead. So, let's get started with a few different radios that we have here. I'm going to kind of identify each one and then uh, I might be able to do a later video on each individual radio as a group. But uh, again, some of these are going to be very familiar to you. I'm going to talk about the advantages of what systems you are currently capable of having and what you'll possibly need a license for. Um, but let's get started. So right here uh, you'll see is a very common uh, handheld radio. This is the this is called the uh, it's an FRS radio and this radio transmits on the family radio system, the FRS system. These are the kinds of radios you can get at Walmart, uh, order on Amazon, uh, your big box stores are going to have these. Uh, this is what when you go to uh, an amusement park and you decide, hey, we're going to use these to talk to our family. And then you realize everybody and their brother is talking on this system. Um, it's a great system, uh, good quality sound, um, decent range. It's not amazing range when we start talking about some of these other radios and some of the other ranges that we can get. Um, basically, this is a good all-around uh, radio that you can use on your homestead for uh, radio to radio communications. And this is a simplex. All these radios that I'm going to talk about right now, I'm talking about using them in simplex form. And I'm going to get into later what the difference between simplex and duplex radio systems are. But um, right now I'm going to talk about all these radios as far as using them in the simplex mode, which essentially means radio to radio. And uh, basically, these are all transmitting and receiving on the same frequency. Okay, so this radio here is the family radio system. Uh, this is again an advantage because they're easy to use. They're easy to get batteries for. Generally, they take uh, AA or AAA batteries. Some of them are rechargeable, uh, but for the most part, they'll come with rechargeable batteries that you can then replace with AA's, AAA's. So if you had a situation where you weren't able to get uh, new batteries, that were rechargeable as long as you can find double AA, A, triple A, you're good to go with this. Uh, these generally have about, um, I believe it's about 20 channels. Uh, inside these radios, they have what's called sub channels, um, or some of them will call them privacy channels. Um, essentially, what that is is it's not more channels, it is a uh, essentially uh, partitioning off the channel that you're currently in. So you might have a 1.1 or a 1.2, 1.3, and uh, that doesn't mean that you're on uh, a different channel. It means you're on that channel, but your radio is transmitting what's called a PL tone, and it's sending that other radio that tone, and, and those two only want to talk to each other and not with the others. So um, basically that's a family radio system. Again, the advantage is um, they're cheap, they're easy to get. You don't have to have a license. You don't have to have any other... Um, anything else for these radios. Um, the disadvantage is going to be uh, these are obviously all these are going to be line of sight radios um, but uh, these short stubby antennas um, and the frequencies that these operate on um, you don't get great range. These radios you'll see the package it'll say 25 miles. Now that's 25 miles if I'm standing on top of a mountain and you're 25 miles down at the bottom of the mountain and I've got um, straight line of sight to you that if you really saw me then yeah these radios are going to work that way. Generally what you're going to get out of these radios depending on the atmospheric conditions, on the terrain that you're in, you know you're going to get no more than two three miles out of these radios. Uh, some situations where you're in the cities you might not even get a mile depending on what kind of refraction you're getting from the buildings, uh, what kind of absorption you're getting uh, with your frequencies. So. Uh, you know, I've used these radios in uh, buildings where I can't even get to the other side of the building. So, again, advantages and disadvantages to these radios. So that that's this radio right here. They come in all different brands, all different styles. They operate on the family radio system. 
Um, another radio similar to that, where you don't have to have any licensing, anything like that, is the... Uh, <laughs> this came out a couple years ago. Um, well, I say a couple, probably about 10 years ago. I bought a set of these to try them out, see how I liked them. Um, these are the extreme radio system, the XRS. Um, these are operating in a higher, uh, uh, higher frequency than what these radios do. Um, the range on these are not anywhere near these radios here. Uh, these radios have much better range than this. The advantage of this radio, however, is it uses what's called frequency hop. So essentially what this system does is if I put in any channel set um, based on this, the way this radio was set up, one, two, I think it's 100,000, um, if I put in any numerical code and then put the same numerical code on the other side of the radio, so if I take, if I take this radio and put the same free, uh, channel as this radio, these two radios understand that if they're on that channel, they're going to hop frequencies, which means that in that channel set, they've got over a thousand frequencies they're going to consistently keep changing to, and they're going to do it in the same pattern. So the advantage is, if even if someone else has this radio, unless they know the exact channel that I put into this radio, they're not going to be able to hear my conversation. So it's a, it's a form of uh, operational security, communication security. We call that ComSec and OPSEC. Uh, basically, if you have anything that you don't want other people to hear your conversations, uh, to be able to pick up, know what's going on, these are these have the advantage there. However, uh, because of the frequencies they operate on, again, you don't need a license, but um, you have less range, and um, essentially there's uh, just the, the fact that um, with this radio here, the FRS, any brand of that radio, I can talk to that radio. These, you can only use these brand radios with this system. Um, you can't copy the uh, programming or anything like that from these radios. Okay. So another advantage of these radios, um, of course it's really old school. You can text with them, but you have to do it with the old school, um, you know, pressing two, three times in order to get uh, the letter C. Um, so if that makes any sense to some of us older guys that remember the old school way of texting. Uh, so anyway, that's that's this radio system here. Again, great advantage, com, uh, ComSec is awesome in these, uh, but the drawback is the distance and the uh, ability. Also these, oh, sorry, did not mean to hit the camera here. Also, uh, these take a special type of battery. I can't put just any batteries in them. So there's that disadvantage as well, all right? So if we come over here, uh, this, uh, anybody who uh, was in the heyday of the 70s and 80s of the CB radio times, uh, we've got two CB radios here. These are these are handheld CB radios. This is an older model, uh, and this is one of the newer ones that came out in the mid to late 90s. Um, I was able to purchase both of these at um, garage sta garage sales, yard sales, whatever, for very low prices. They work very well for what they are. Um, these are pushing out about four watts, so not very high wattage. Um, the reception is not very good on these. Uh, Essentially, because of the antennas and the frequency range that these work on, uh, it's not that great. Uh, these are actually pretty good radios for if you are wanting to talk to a mobile, which is a, a CB radio that somebody might have in a car, and maybe you're uh, just not far from the car. That, that would be the advantage there because they're going to have a better receive and transmit. You'll be able to know what's going on. But radio to radio, um, again, you're going to get better get better service with this than you are with these. Now, is that to say that these are something you shouldn't get? No, you can get these for, you know, anywhere from five to ten dollars at a, at a garage sale. Grab a couple of them because uh, if these communications go down, at least you have these communications. Um, there's an old saying in uh, the preparedness community, uh, one is, two is, two is one and one is none. So if I've only got, you know, one set of communications, ways of communicating, then, uh, if that goes down, I'm out. Uh, at least this is a, another way to communicate. CB has kind of gone the wayside. It used to be a huge, huge uh, thing that everybody was really into. Um, you used to be able to go to emergency channel 9. Even law enforcement and fire would monitor that in case of an emergency. That's not the case anymore. Uh, basically, truckers are still using channel 19, but you still do have 40 channels that you can operate on with these radios. Um, and they're not, again, they're not a bad radio system. Uh, you know, especially when you've got people who are maybe like uh, off-roaders or jeepers 
and they might have um, CBs in their vehicles, these will come in handy, especially if you have to dismount from the vehicle, maybe you got to go uh, down the roadway a little bit or whatever, and you still need to make those communications. Again, with these communications, the, the advantage of having all these radios and all these communications is if the radio or if the cell towers are down or if the power's out, these are all capable of being used because they're all battery operated radios um, and easily chargeable with uh, solar, solar panels or uh, 12 volt power, power supplies from maybe a car or something like that you can recharge or again put in AA batteries these actually both can take AA batteries or rechargeable batteries um, they're obviously AA rechargeable or just uh, alkaline um, or the uh, lithium batteries whatever you want to use in these um, that's the advantage of these as well um, it's also a disadvantage because those batteries um, they're not long lasting of course if you get the lithium batteries they tend to last a little longer so, um, so basically these radios right here are going to be the ones that you're able to use without a license. You don't have to have any special kinds of uh, anything to really use these. Now what we're going to point out here is uh, right over here, you'll see these are actually um, UHF, VHF radios. One of these is VHF, one of these is UHF. These are capable of, of, of basically talking on uh, frequencies that are... Um, used in the ham radio, the two meter band, um, as well as these are able to talk on frequencies that uh, a lot of fire, EMS, and police used to use. Um, in this part of Appalachia, uh, we have gone to a complete digital system. Uh, we rarely, if ever, use the analog systems. Um, so, uh, basically, um, the advantage to that is you can get a lot of these for really cheap. And if you can get the programming or you know somebody that can program them, they can put these frequencies in. But again, these are going to be on the ham radio uh, frequencies, the two meter frequency spectrum, which that is going to require that you have a, at minimum, technician license um, through the FCC for amateur radio. Now, it's not a very hard thing to do. Uh, I just, uh, I have my uh, amateur radio license. I just took the test not too long ago, passed the test. And what happens is the FCC sends you a, um, gives you a call sign, and basically you just have to understand the rules, the laws of using all these frequencies that are allowed. But in that frequency set is a two meter, uh, two meter fre frequency set, which allows you to use these radios. Now, the 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 cool part about the times we're living in right now is um, basically these radios right over here are also capable of transmitting on the on the two meter frequency band. Uh, these are dual band radios. Uh, you can transmit on UHF or VHF. You can also transmit and receive on different frequencies. So they're duplex radios. Uh, we talked about simplex, which is radio to radio, which uh, these are capable of that. These are cap all these radios are capable of simplex, but these radios here and these radios here are capable of duplex. And what that means is when they transmit on one frequency, they receive on another. And I'm going to show you in an illustration here in a second uh, what that means uh, and basically why that's important and why you would want to do, do that. Um, but to uh, point out before we go anywhere, these radios can be programmed. Um, this radio here is, I believe... I don't know how well you can see that. You only have so many channels that you're able to pick from, and they have to be pre-programmed into the radio. Obviously, this one's got a bad antenna. This is one of the older ones I have that I replaced. Kept it just for demonstration purposes. Um, so, 10 channels here, and I think 8 channels on this radio. So, that's only 10 or 8 channels that I can choose from. These radios over here, these are, these are called uh, Baofangs. Uh, they're Chinese-made radios. They're not amazing quality in any way, shape, or form. However, they are 100% capable of doing what uh, I need them to do, and they are also um, very uh, useful in the situations that I think I may need these radios for, which is uh, emergency communications, emergency operations, and any kind of radio to radio or, again, radio to repeater to radio communications give me a little bit more range, okay? So these uh, radios over here are generally about 4 watts. These uh, transmit on, I believe these are 5 watts, and you can, buy now, you can now buy radios that are transmitting up to 8 watts, which is a lot of power. Uh, if you'll notice here, I've got a longer antenna on this one. This is actually a 42-inch whip antenna. Uh, I'll demonstrate some of that later on another video. Uh, the I'll talk about antennas and the advantages and disadvantages of different kinds of antennas. 
But again, these uh, the only difference between these two radios is that they're the same programming on the inside, same frequency ranges. Uh, this is the waterproof version, and this is the just standard base model. The advantage here is this radio right here, you can currently get at this time on Amazon for $21.99 shipped to your house with Amazon Prime within a day. Uh, it'll come with some several accessories, comes with a charging uh, base. You can actually purchase uh, a lot of uh, accessories for these radios. Um, basically, this antenna here is an $18 antenna, and it's an amazing antenna. Um, I'm going to show you down the road uh, how, how awesome this antenna really is. Uh, you can buy earpieces, you can buy hand mics, you can buy uh, more uh, larger batteries. I'll show you that here in a little while. Um, you can buy adapters to where you can put 12 volt batteries and operate these on 12 volt batteries. You can buy 12 volt um, battery adapters to where you can plug it straight into your cigarette lighter in your vehicle. You can buy external antennas that can uh, essentially you can turn this into a mobile radio in your vehicle. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can do with these style radios uh, because of the fact they've become so popular. Um, these Beofang radios, again, they're not high-end radios, they're not amazing radios. I'm not here advocating saying these are the best of the best. I'm saying these are for their price range and for what you would need them for in an emergency situation or a survival situation, these are adequate for what you would want. Um, again, this is the waterproof version. It is very similar to this one, except uh, it's got a different style connector and it is not 100% waterproof. They call it waterproof. It's water resistant up to, I think it's three meters underwater. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, but there's the advantage of if you're out in the rain, if you're in the snow, if you're in whatever, you don't have to worry about this radio getting wet and dying on you. Um, so that is an advantage to this. This radio right now, I think last time I looked, it was about $39, $40 on Amazon. Uh, again, comes with the same accessories, a charging base, uh, I think an earpiece, uh, different things like that. And I'll kind of get into, I'll get into these radios more as we talk more about um, ham radio, two meter radio, and things like that. But again, these are all examples of um, uh, simple, uh, handheld, mobile radio systems that could be an advantage to you in any kind of emergency situation, any kind of uh, just simple homestead situation. Generally what I like to do is I will, uh, especially these FRS radio systems, uh, my wife will have one in the house and when, I, when I'll be outside working or up in the woods doing something, if she needs to get a hold of me, it's a lot easier for her to radio me with this because sometimes my cell phone, I don't hear it if I'm on the tractor, but I can clip that up near my head, uh, whether it's on my collar, on my suspenders, whatever it would be, and I, and I hear that radio. Um, so that's the advantage there. And also, it's just a second secondary backup, so I'll have my cell phone on me. Uh, but if I would fall and hurt and I can't get to my cell phone or my cell phone would break, I can use that radio to radio her and get help. Um, again, the advantage is here. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this video up because I know I'm getting a little long here. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to do a part two, and I'm going to talk about the difference between simplex and duplex communications and why there's an advantage to having these, these radios here uh, to operate and the two meter band and what the advantage of having a repeater uh, system or a repeater that you can use again which is why uh, that makes the advantage of these radios here more useful in emergency situations than this group over here again uh, you know, if, if all you're planning is, well, you know, I just want something for around the house, these are all great. Or if I just, you know, hey, I'm saving money right now, I don't have a whole lot of money to do stuff, I don't have time to put into ham radio, you know, these are great options for emergency radio systems. But, again, there's a huge advantage to having these, and I'm going to get more into that. So, again, stay tuned. Stay tuned for part two of uh, handheld communications. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm Appalachian Survivalist. Um, you have any questions or comments please make sure you post down in the uh, questions and comments section just below here and also uh, be sure to like and subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can get all the notifications of outcoming videos like i told you guys i'm back i want to make sure that i get as many videos out as possible and get information out to you because i really truly feel like this is something important that uh, that anybody and everybody who can contribute to helping others be better prepared, whether it be for natural disasters, 
um, any kind of uh, disaster period or any kind of problems that may come their way, that they are prepared and, re and ready to respond. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next uh, episode. And uh, like and subscribe. And God bless.